guys, Ryan here from Movie Nerds. I'm Scoot. And we just checked out the most awesome movie of all time, Ready Player One. Uh, it stars Ty Sheridan as he goes back, not so much back, but into. it's back for us. It's so much nostalgia. I know, too uh, much. But he heads into the Oasis, a virtual reality world where you can be basically whoever you want, whatever you want, and basically whatever character you want from anything. The sky's the limit, or the imagination's the limit, How really. do they do it? We don't know, but we're going to let you know right after this. So Ready Play One, this is a story about our main character, Wade Watts, played by... Ty Sheridan. Ty Sheridan, yes. Up and, up and coming, up and coming, it's fine. Up and coming, uh, he's alright now. The issue becomes when he starts forgetting Spielberg's name. Yes, yes. So Ty Sheridan plays Wade Watts, he's a, he's a kind of nerdy kid living in the stacks in Columbus, Ohio in the year 2045. The future is not the greatest, so no. everyone's decided to live in this virtual world called the Oasis. Yeah. Um, where basically the imagination's the limit, and this is the basically the framing of a very similar kind of story to Willy Wonka in that there's an... <laughs> Yeah. So much so, that's exactly where my, mind, yeah, my, yeah. my brain went to, too. Basically an adventure film where they need to unlock the secrets in this virtual world to basically get control of the virtual world. They're being chased down by old mate Ben Mendelsohn and yep. his team from IOI yeah. who really want to also get control of the Oasis. Yeah. Um, but ultimately this is just... Uh, this is, this is kind of just our launching pad into this great world of just anything you could possibly imagine. Literally, name it and it's in this movie. We were going to do a video of all the Easter eggs from this film and I started listing them at the start of the film and then it just got ballistic there is, there, and there's no way, you cannot keep, I have to see this movie, movie about 10 times. Good luck before. YouTube on putting out a comprehensive video yeah. on this. If there's a guy on YouTube that does it, we're not worthy. It's going to be longer we're than the film worthy. itself. Yeah, it's true. It's seriously. It's true. There's probably about 15,000 references to games, movies, board games, books. Uh, if, if you like something Music? from the 80s or 90s, yeah. nine times out of 10, it's going to be in this movie. And I don't know what the licensing factors oh, were for this, mate. but and, Christ. And, and it is only Spielberg who's going to be able to pull this off, really. Like exactly. No one else has that kind of power. This is very similar to Roger Rabbit in that you know he's able to use his powers to kind of get out of, get you know, get as much as he wants in this movie. And what I really liked is that he doesn't really spend any time saying, oh, look, here's the pulse rifle from Aliens. That's right. Or it's, it's just kind of there. It's for there you to pick out. But yep. they don't really call it out, which is kind of nice because it's, it's, I mean, it'd be really easy to say, hey, look what this cool last That's right. We yeah, got. yeah. And if you know what the movie was, you get the reference exactly. and that's what it is. That's, yep. that's, that's as far as it gets put on the table. Um, but I like to think that Spielberg went into every one of these conferences to try and get the license for these things and told them about the Reese's Pieces M&M story from E.T. Yeah. E. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like, look, we had M&M's, <laughs> we wanted M&M's for E.T., but they said no. And now Reese's Pieces is the most memorable thing from E.T. Oh outside of the alien. <laughs> so they all just jumped at the chance. That's what I imagine he did. Yeah. But uh, once again, it's Spielberg. How could you say no to exactly. him? Exactly. And I think we've got a, it's a really cool, compelling story. I think uh, everyone's going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, Let's talk about the cast. Cast. Ty Sheridan. I. He, he doesn't bring anything new to the I table, agree. but you know, as long as his acting isn't terrible, that you kind of pick him out like a Hayden Christensen. Yeah, yeah. Then you've done your job. That's yeah. all you need to do. And I think what's great about this is that they, uh, obviously, these characters, oh, these actors played the virtual selves as well in the in the VR world. That's so right. There's a lot of it that's kind of hidden amongst their their avatars and you know slick hair and all this fancy stuff. So. They, they, it does its job compelling, but a lot of the real life stuff is just him and virtual goggles. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of similar to the Matrix. Every time they're slapped in a chair, right? Um, <laughs> ben Middleton stand, stood out for, stood out for yeah, me. Yeah, he, I think. he had uh, a much more bigger role because he's he's villainous in both the real world and the you know the the, the Oasis. So that's right. He got to do a lot more. So the other kind of supporting characters are Mark Rylance, who plays the creator of the Oasis, and he's he's a, it's a really interesting role for him, right? Because he's you know, you've seen him in Bridge of Spies, and this is more kind of what he did with the BFG was in Spielberg, and he kind of plays it weird. He's kind of yeah. got this kind of real weird vibe to him, not quirky in a creepy character. way, but yeah, very quirky. Yeah, yeah. And then Simon Pegg plays his offsider, who doesn't really get a lot of screen time, but I quite enjoyed him for the it was it was in. different for a Simon Pegg. Correct, it was, yeah. it was no, by no means a comedic role. No. Um, and for for Simon Pegg, something totally different and a bit more of a dramatic role almost. Like he, there was no comedy tone to, to him no, whatsoever. No, he played which a I very serious fun. part to the kind of story. Story yeah. and, and ultimately a very human element to the story and in, in a world where it's very it's you know 80% virtual it's that's a really important part and I think Definitely. that's something we talked about is that uh, you know the, the film is 
eighty twenty maybe live action to, to virtual. Yeah. But the stuff that was live action felt very Spielberg. You know, so much. The five leads kind of on an adventure together. It just happens to be they end up in a virtual world. And even even the look of it. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, there was a scene where it was placed in a bedroom, and it just felt like I was in. Elliot's bedroom yeah, from ET, and, I, and, and it's obviously the that's same, you know, exactly. It just had that and... '80s, um, you know, orange hue. Correct. I just want to be a part of that, and I wasn't, and yeah. I'm upset. Oh, sorry, sir. Yeah. But it is really nice to see kind of Spielberg <laughs> back in you know, audience mode. This is so yeah, hundred percent so. Hundred you know, It's very much. This is very much an adventure film for us, the moviegoers. Yeah. It's a I, fan service. Yeah. If you love Spielberg of any generation, especially the '80s, yeah. it's a fan service to you. And and the fans are Spielberg. Yeah, and you owe it to yourself to check this out. Really, this is this is this is everything you could possibly want from this kind of movie. Really, it's just kind of all the kickbacks to your favorite kind of Spielberg movies. I think if Absolutely. that's what you're into, you're gonna have a good time. And that's one thing I actually found funny, uh, essentially, about this film. That even though it had so much nostalgic in it. There wasn't really any throwbacks to any other Spielberg films. No, and he, there was no Jaws, there was no E.T. No. And the T-Rex and Jurassic Park got a little shout out. Yeah, it could have been just a T-Rex yeah, I know. in reality. And, like, there was no like, specific roar or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, I mean, obviously the DeLorean plays a fairly big part. That's our main character's vehicle of choice. And I, just so no one throws any, I know, I understand yeah. that Spielberg produced, produced it. So I'm maybe, going to maybe it's a bit more lenient, lenient with the stuff he produced. But That's yeah, right. he was very adamant. And, and fair call. It would feel weird referencing your own work, right? Yeah. I was like, how cool am I? I got this in. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know? true. True. Uh, good point. Yeah, Valid point. Yeah. My favorite part has to be probably there's a scene in the movie where they head into an actual real life movie that, yep. that, that, that we've all seen. And it takes the nostalgia to another level. Yeah. Uh, it, it's rather than characters being, like you yeah, said, rather than characters being thrown in your face, yeah. you're actually there and you're... You're, you're, you're spending time, right? Yeah. With this. The film is filled with like a lot of little things here and there, um, but this is, you're spending a good five, 10 minutes yeah. of this film set in this world that once you see it, you'll know it obviously, but and it's a very it's, well-known thing. It's so, like the second you're there, you're just like, yeah, is this, it, was this, shot with the parts of the movie that and they what, use or well, like obviously the avatar characters are cg right but it's all the all everything else the backgrounds the the locations they seem like they're straight from yeah the original reference material yeah so. very cool very clever however they did it what was your favorite part um i quite like the the third act i thought that was um how it all kind of came together you've seen in the trailer there's a massive big kind of battle yeah um and that was kind of just it was absolute reference overload there's stuff left right and center but there's yeah. still a real clear it wasn't just a mess of things it was still right. very much a clear story and a clear, clear purpose to it so yeah. I, I appreciated that because it would be really easy to kind of get lost in just throwing out nostalgia and references and all this stuff that's right uh, but spielberg really kind of keeps it very level-headed um, and kind of make sure that it's to drive the story forward. You said it beautifully. Can't well, say tried. it any better than that. That's how I try. So should people check this out? Definitely. This is this is going to be one that uh, you're going to have a really good time with. It's coming out March. This could have been very easily been a summer movie, and maybe this yeah. summer is very busy. You've got Avengers coming out. Everyone's going to see Avengers. Yeah. But personally, push that aside. Go check out this. 100%. If you love the 80s, love the 90s, if you love Spielberg, yeah. if you love... Anything it just film, yeah, if you it, just love films, yeah, this just, is a movie you yeah, have to check adventure out. Adventure movies, anything that you kind of grew up liking as a kid, you're going to see something of it in this picture. Perfect. Uh, so I'm Ryan. I'm Scoot. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, comment below and let us know what you thought of the movie. And until next time, in case we don't see you, we'll see you guys at the movies. Bye.